So I'm gonna make these announcements. And I don't guess it makes that big a difference. Um, Rhonda is en route home uh, from Tennessee and she'll be in sometime later this evening. Uh, so I, I don't know what the weather's doing in Tennessee, but I know it's raining here. So uh, keep her in your prayers as she travels. Uh, as she travels this evening. I know a lot of folks will be traveling over the next several days for uh, for the holiday. We want to keep everybody uh, in our mind, our prayers uh, as they travel. Um, also, uh, I talked with uh, I talked to Wayne Burleson today. Uh, he called. I can't remember what time it was. Sometime around dinner. And uh, talked to him for a little while, and he's doing quite a bit better. He, uh, he's been having some trouble uh, breathing, and they think they've got him uh, uh, about lined out. He's uh, in the infirmary right now and is hoping to get back into uh, his regular dorm. I, I didn't realize it because I guess I had taken his name off of our list, uh, but uh, today is Wayne's uh, birthday, 79. And so, uh, but uh, one, of the, uh, one of the other inmates made the arrangements for him to call me today because uh, when you get the call when you get the call there's a it gives a name because like a collect call you know you have a call from then you hear a voice <clears throat> well the the name and voice wasn't right so the first thing that went through my mind is something bad has happened and somebody he's made arrangements for somebody to call me and what it was was apparently this guy had some free call time or whatnot and he gave it to Wayne and let Wayne call and call me and so I, I and I, matter of fact, I even talked to that young man afterward and thanked him. And he, uh, he said, he said, Mr. Burleson's a really, really nice guy. He said everybody, everybody loves him and appreciates him. And and so uh, we uh, want to keep Wayne, uh, keep Wayne in our prayers. Like I said, 79, uh, 79 today. Uh, so uh, I'm trying to think of other, any other announcements. There's no word from Mom yet on a, on her biopsies and. And I asked her when she would get her results, and either she didn't see it or she forgot to answer, so I don't have any idea when her uh, biopsy results will be in, but hopefully in the next, next few days. Um, they don't anticipate finding anything bad, but you, know, you never know. Um, is there anyone or anything else, anything I'm, anything I'm overlooking? Um, keep Sean in your prayers as he continues to recover. Yeah, they found. They had they did they confirm that they found her. Okay. They're pretty sure. And, yeah. And by the way, they found the young man from Lynn too that was at uh, Mississippi State. Uh, they found his vehicle. He had. Uh, run off the road and was, his vehicle was hidden uh, from view and they found him uh, I think today and, uh, and he, was, he was from Lynn and, uh, and he has some connections to our area as well okay that, and that may, that may be where I heard it from I may have heard it from Shannon on Sunday but uh, we want to remember that, that family as well two, two, young, two young folks uh, gone from us so uh, not that there's ever a good time but this is sure enough not a good time so um, anyone else we need to remember I'll lead the opening prayers uh, okay uh -huh. I had not heard that <laughs> Carl Lucas had an accident, so we're going to keep him and his family in our prayers as well. I, I tell you what, I'll go ahead and, and uh, lead our uh, opening prayer. And then after that, I'll kind of give a rundown on how we're going to uh, handle things uh, tonight. So let's bow together. Our great Heavenly Father, we're thankful for uh, this beautiful day you've given us. We're thankful for the sunshine and the rain. Father, for all of the physical blessings that have been ours to enjoy. And Father, we're thankful for the opportunity that we have to be here tonight. Father, sheltered from the elements, and, and not only that, but so much more to, to be in a, a place of comfort and peace and quiet. And Father, to be able to offer up uh, this period of worship to Thee, the only living and true God. Father, we are grateful for all of our blessings. 
we're thankful for uh, this holiday season. Uh, we're thankful that, that we as a nation uh, take time uh, aside to, to be thankful. While we know that as a country that we're not thankful enough, uh, but we're thankful that our country uh, at least still uh, gives some lip service or at least pretense to, to thanksgiving while recognizing that uh, all uh, gifts, every good and, and perfect gift comes from you, Father, that also the, the very necessities of life, life and, and breath and, and everything comes from thy bountiful hand and for all of these things we give you thanks. Father, we're mindful uh, this night of, of <coughs> the families of, of those young people that have been missing but now found deceased. Uh, we pray for the, the, the Blanchard and the Haley family. Uh, we pray for the family of the young man from Lynn. And, and, uh, and we pray for uh, their friends and their associates. We ask uh, your blessings uh, to be upon them, uh, especially during uh, this time of the year, we ask that, uh, that they would be comforted and strengthened. Father, we continue to pray for uh, for the Skinner family, for for Neil and Carolyn Myers, and we're, we're, we're grateful for the faith that they have exhibited. We're thankful for the work that the brethren have done in, in helping to carry them through this difficult time, and we pray that our good brethren over in Bremen will continue to, to do that and to, to lift uh, this good family up and to uphold them and, and strengthen and, and comfort them. And Father, we're grateful for the blessings that you've showered on them uh, through your people. Uh, we pray that you will uh, be pleased with the things that we do here tonight, that uh, as, we, as we read thy word, as we meditate on it, Father, as we sing these songs of praise and as we approach uh, thy throne of mercy and grace in prayer, that uh, you'll be pleased uh, with what we do and that, uh, that we'll be edified and that you'll be glorified in all that we do and say here this night. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Um, tell I'm like, Ryan, if you will, go ahead. And, have you got a song, like a song picked out or a number of songs picked out? All right. Two. We're going to be here a little while. I'm probably going to need more two. But uh, I'm going to do a reading. And I'll read from Psalm 107, probably about the first 14 verses. So if you want to go ahead and turn there, Psalm 107. And if that sounds familiar when I start reading it, it's because it's on our sign out front. and has been for several days. So I'm going to read the first. I'll read the first 22 verses of uh, of this chapter. And like we said earlier, that if you have uh, if you have selected a reading and you want to comment on that reading when you're finished, you are free to do so. If you do, if you choose not to comment, uh, that's fine. You can be like Dylan and hand me your comments. And uh, I appreciate Dylan uh, preparing his reading and. And I told him I wanted you to write down some things that, that jump out at this text. I said, you don't have to say them. I said, I'll say them for you. And so I appreciate, appreciate him doing that uh, this week. And so, But I'm not going to comment on my reading because the reading is pretty long. And so my reading will count as my comment. All right, so Psalm 107. This is the beginning of book five of the Psalms. Verse number one. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a desolate way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distress, and he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city for a dwelling place. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. For He satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound in affliction and irons, because they rebelled against the word of the Lord and despised the counsel of the Most High. Therefore He brought down their heart with labor, 
they fell down and there was none to help. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and He saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke their chains in pieces. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. For He has broken the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in two. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, were afflicted. Their soul abhorred all manner of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and He saved them out of their distresses. He sent His word and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare His work with rejoicing. Psalm 107, verses 1 through 22. Ryan, you got a song to lead us in? 449. 449. We'll sing the first, the second, and the fourth. The first, the second, and the fourth. 449. Oh, to be like the blessed Redeemer, this is my constant longing and prayer. Gladly I'll forfeit all of earth's treasures, Jesus thy perfect likeness to wear. reading he'll be reading from uh, John 14 1 to 6 John 14 1 to 6 and after uh, after he reads I'll uh, make some comments that that he's uh, provided for me before Dylan comes up here I got to tell you this when y'all saw Darley come blowing up here and, and run to Ryan that very thing happened to me 
1993 when I was trying out to be the preacher at White House. It was about the second Sunday of August, and uh, it was the, well, yeah, the second Sunday. I believe the second Sunday of August, or the or was the or yeah. And Rhonda uh, Jeffrey was like three months old, and so Rhonda had Jeffrey back in the nursery in the back of the building, and Shelby was about two and a half years old. And my grandma Burleson had come down with us, and grandma Burleson had hold Shelby, or so she thought. And during the invitation song, after my tryout sermon, about verse 2, Grandma looks around, and Shelby's gone. And here she comes. And you know that big, that big old long aisle, right down, and downhill coming down to White House. And Shelby just come down there and, and just, did, just did me exactly like Darley did you. Just grabbed me up. And I said, what are you going to do? Just, just pick her up and hold her. And Rhonda was in the back and she could see through the glass. And her, she said her countenance just fell. Her heart sank. She said, we'll never get this job. <laughs> well, she was right, but it wasn't because of Shelby. But, uh, but when, I saw, when I saw that right then, it reminded me, that was 26 years, 26 years ago, the exact same thing happened to me in a whole lot worse situation <laughs> than the where it just happened to you. So, so, so lighten up, Amber. <laughs> All right, you ready, deal? Yeah. All right, John 14, 1 to 6. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be sad or afraid. Believe in God and believe in me also. There are many rooms in my Father's house. I will go now so that I can prepare a place for you there. If it was not true, I would not have told you this. After I will prepare a place for you, I will return. Then I will take you so that you will be with me. You will be where I am. You know the way to the place where I, where I will go. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you will go, so how can we know the way to get there? Jesus answered, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Dylan gave me four things from the text. And I think really I think really the first one is is uh, so apropos when we think about um, the situations of those families that a nice family and the, I can't think of the young man's name from Lynn but uh, to think about their family and their loss and, and we think about the, the uncertainty of life with, with so many of our folks having tests and, and health difficulties I think about my mom and, and uh, I think about what Dylan said right here at first says, don't be afraid, believe in God. And, and you know, that's just so simple. And yet, it's many times it's difficult to do. I mean, it's difficult to, it's, sometimes it's difficult to, to, to have faith uh, in God. I remember what Brother Woodson told me one time, and he told it in a, in a larger context, that uh, when he was a young preacher, there was the, the non-institutional, or what we call the anti-movement, was making its inroads in the church and was making a lot of headway. And Brother Woodson, this had been back in the 1950s, was a, a real young preacher. And he said, I went to Nashville, Tennessee, to the gospel office of the Gospel Advocate so I could go talk to Guy in Woods. He said, I went into Brother Woods, and I, he said, I just told him all of my, he said, told him everything that was going on, and he said, what in the world are we going to do? And he said, Brother Woods said this. He said, he said, Brother Woodson, he says, is your faith in God or is it in men? And Brother Woodson said, well, it's in God. And Brother Woodson said, well, then act like it. <laughs> and it stu that stuck with Brother Woodson all those years to be reminded, you know, to be reminded that, you know, things can happen in our personal lives, things can happen in, in our church lives and and." Regardless of what uh, those things might be, uh, don't be afraid. Uh, don't be afraid and believe in God. Then the second thing Dylan 
gave us is from verse uh, number two. And he, by the way, he summarized his thoughts. He says, he says, there are many rooms in my father's house. You know, that's a, that's a beautiful thought. Um, you know, tomorrow, you know, Rhonda and I hope to be in uh, Tresden to be with Mom and Freeman for a few days for, for the holidays. And, and then uh, Bryant and Shelby and Eloise are coming. And the parsonage has three bedrooms. And so Mom and Freeman, me and Rhonda, Shelby and Bryant and Eloise, that house is going to be full. And then my sister's coming. Now, I don't mean this in a bad way, but fortunately, she's not bringing all four of her kids. <laughs> because we don't, know, we don't know where we're going to put them. Mom said, I don't know where they're going to sleep. So said, they'll either have to sleep on the couch, sleep on the floor, or at the, the, and the house is not as close to the building as, as, as this parsonage is, but it's just a stone's throw. And she said, said they, they might just bunk up and, and sleep in the fellowship building. You know, but I, I thought about what Dylan, in my father's house there are many rooms, and and it doesn't matter how many you know, however many people there are that go to heaven, it'll be big enough to accommodate them. You know, it, it's not going to be you know we're not going to be bumping elbows or you know or, or it's not going to be like a bunch of sardines. However, however many it takes, that's or how many rooms it takes, that's exactly what that's exactly what it'll be, and so there's always. Uh, just like the church, there's always room for one more. Always room for one more. Uh, then number three, the promise. Where, uh, I'm sorry, you will be where I am. You will be where I am. And I know, I know that Dylan was probably, probably thinking about John 12, 26 when he wrote that. I'm just kidding, Dylan. I know you weren't thinking of John 12. But... <laughs> But I, but I thought about it when I read what you wrote. Jesus said, If any man serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. John Ramsey used to say it like this. If you'll follow Jesus wherever he goes, you'll end up where he is. And that's, that's it. You will be. You will be where I am. And then I love this, you know, the summary the summary of his fourth point in the last one from, from verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Um, there is no such thing as a bunch of people going to heaven taking different roads. Now a lot of folks think like that. That there's many ways, but that's not what Jesus said. He said, I am what? The way. I am the way. That's just, that just one. What about John 10? I am the door. Just one door. You know, we're to earnestly contend for the faith. There's just one faith. And so, you know, Christianity is an interesting, it is an interesting religion, if you want to think about it in, the, in these terms. That it is big enough, it is big enough to include everyone, but it's also narrow enough to exclude anyone. That seems strange, right? But the point is, is that anybody that wants to do the Lord's things, the Lord's way, He'll make a way. But there will be no way made for those that don't do the Lord's things, the Lord's way. Matthew 7, 21 to 23 uh, teach us uh, that. You know, that not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will in the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So that's a pretty that's a pretty narrow that's a pretty narrow path. Because earlier he said, "Enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat." Because difficult, straight or narrow is the way, and difficult or narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. Matthew seven thirteen, fourteen. So I appreciate Dylan not only taking the time to read. But taking the time to, to write these down for us and uh, for us to think about them. Um, um, tell you what I want, I want to, Ryan, if you will lead, if you'll lead, uh, uh, lead us in one more, one song. And then after that, I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to ask Lynn, if he would, to lead us in a word of prayer. And, and just, to be, just to be mindful of the things that are here in, in, in this text and, and, and the thoughts about Jesus providing the way for us and, 
and, and that, that all, all men that can obey or will obey can go. 478. 478. Four seventy eight. We'll sing all three verses. <coughs> Christ will take me through all the storms of life. Through this wicked world with this sin and strife. He will take me through. So I'm going to read uh, from Luke 12. It says, In the meantime, when an innumerable multitude of people had gathered together, so they 
so that they trampled one another, he began to say to his disciples, first of all, beware the, le the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hip hip hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that will not be that would not be revealed, nor hidden that would become that would not be known. Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light, and whatever you have spoken in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed on the house steps. And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who, who kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I show you whom you should fear. Fear him who after all after he has killed has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. Are you are not are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins? And not one of them is forgotten before God. But the very hairs on your head are innumerable. And I do not fear, therefore, you are more value you you are of more value than many sparrows. Also I said to you say to you, whoever confesses me before man, him the Son of Man, also confess me, the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will be not will be denied before the angels of God. And anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But to him who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven. Now when they bring you to the synagogues and magistrates and authorities, do not worry about how or what you should answer or what you should, or what you should say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour of what you ought to say. The one from the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man who had made me a judge or an arbitrator over you. Also he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So you have many goods laid up for you many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But, but God said to him, Fool, this night you shall... Your, Full this night your soul will be required of you. For then yeah, then whose will those things be which you have provided? So he, so is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Six hundred and ninety two. Six hundred and ninety two. Sing one and two. One and two of six ninety two. So long I had traveled life stormy sea where billows were fierce and cold. I heard a voice saying, Come on. And now I am safe in his fold. I will lean on, on his arm, where no tempest can harm. I will have no fear with my Lord so near. I will lean on the Savior's arm. He's walking beside me along life's way, wherever my feet may roam. I know he will guide me each hour and day, till I shall reach heaven, my home. I will lean on his arm, where no tears can harm. It's like watching that show, Will the Real So-and-So Please Stand Up? Ecclesiastes chapter 4. This is where we're getting 
some close on time. I'm just going to stick to uh, verse 9. We'll start on verse 9 and go through verse 12 real quick. Everybody, Start in verse 9, Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down, they will keep, they will keep warm. But how can one be uh, warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. A threefold, a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So, uh, my first thoughts when I read this, which is, I've read it before, I think I've used it in Bible or something, but it's one of my, probably one of my favorite passages in the Bible. But the, the idea of unity and the, the importance of it, and I think we have a good example of it here, but you can apply it to anything a family, a marriage, a, you know, a, a church. Group, whatever you want to think, unity is is probably the key to success in anything we do. And that's my first thoughts when I think about it to how how we're blessed here to have a, a you know good unity, to have friends, people we can rely on. But the more I thought about it, the more I, those thoughts started to flip, and uh, I started thinking about the people who maybe who don't have those things. And there's a lot of people out there right now who, who would, I think, would do good to be in a situation that all of us are in. And, you know, that when we think about the news of the, you know, the two young people today and their family and friends and their, you know, people like that, especially this time of year, that, you know, they, they need those things. And uh, I think we have opportunity to do a lot of good to be there for people, when, you know, when they're in need. And uh, so that's just where it took me. That's where I thought of. And if, if uh, if you will, bow with me and I'll lead us in a short word of prayer and we'll move on. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we're, we're thankful to you again for this opportunity this evening. Thank you to you for each and every person that's come out this evening as a member of this, this group here. We're thankful for each person, the roles that they play here, the, the, the roles that they have in life, the examples they are, the, what they mean to their families, their friends, and their community. We're, we're thankful for each and every one. We're Thankful for the just the opportunity, the blessing we have to be a part of this group here. How you bless us, how you uh, work in our lives each day. We're thankful for it. We're thankful that you've seen fit for us to be here this evening to open up your word, to take that it says, to apply it to our lives, and use it for things. Pray that, that that all we've done here today is pleasing to you. That we'll take it out in our lives. That we'll look for opportunities to help those who may be in need of a friend, may be in need of someone to uh, help them through difficult times. We know those opportunities, especially this time of year during the holidays, seem to arise more and uh, we should always be ready and prepared to help any opportunity that we do have. Father, we pray that you'll help us to stand ready to uh, just always be on guard and always be ready and looking for opportunity to help anyone we may. That all the works and things that we do will just uh, be used to glorify your name. These things we ask in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Alright. <clears throat> We're going to keep going. You might get cut out tonight. You'll be, that means you'll be ready next time. Alright. Who else got to read? I'll read. Uh, Romans. Chapter 6. I was going to read through 14, but I think I'll just go through about 9. It's pretty short of it. Romans 6. 1 through 9. It says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you know what, or, or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, and just as Christ was raised from the dead 
by the glory of the Father, even so we also sat, should walk in newness of life. For if we have been unified together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we die with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. Uh, there's been a lot of sermons preached on this text. I guess you've got one <laughs> based on the <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's just saying, I think, uh, you know, we've been buried with him through baptism and through his death. And in verse 4 and then down to verse 6, it says the old man was crucified with him. So baptism is a picture of, uh, of death, burial, and resurrection. And when you're baptized and you go under, that you're, the, old, the old man is dead. When you come up, you're in newness of life. You're you've got a fresh start, and uh, you know you. And, and as we live and learn more, you know how to live uh, for Christ. But that gets us started in, in our Christian walk with Him. And uh, you know, biggest part of the religious world today, uh, they'll say that uh, baptism is really not necessary. You know, a lot of them say that uh, you're saved and then baptized. Well, you know, read this right here. So, you know, and, and not just this text, but others. Uh, Galatians 3.27. As many of you have been baptized into Christ, has put on Christ. How much plainer can you get? You know, so baptism is essential. I mean, you've got... Uh, I mean, you know, if you talk to most people, they'll, you know, that go to church anywhere, about anywhere of any kind, and, uh, you know, believe, repent, confess, they'll go along with those three things, but when you get to baptism, whoa, you know, I mean, I don't know whether they're afraid to get rid of or what, but just like, uh, I think some of you preached and had the example of Naaman doing, uh, you know, had to do exactly as the Lord told him. He didn't, for some reason, went to hardly do that. And he wasn't healed till he'd done what he was told. You know, I don't know why we have to be uh, put under water, you know, baptized. I, I mean, I'm, well, I mean, it tells us a reason for it, but it could have been some other act, just as well as baptism. Uh, but it says to do it, and... And uh, there's just a whole lot in the New Testament. You know, you can read different accounts. Uh, Acts 2. Uh, and this, this one here and another one in Romans, I think, three, uh, 3, 1 through 6 or something, I think. But it's just, you know, having to do with uh, uh, being, becoming a Christian, it's, it's part of that. And, uh, I mean, why not, you know? Part of it, so you need, you know, you just need to do what you, what, the, what the Bible tells you to do, and you'll be, you'll be right. And uh, that's uh, that's just some thoughts. And uh, in other words, baptism, in my way of thinking, uh, you know, those things I mentioned: believe and uh, repent, confess, and be baptized. But baptism puts the the, the seal on it, the seal, and the seals the deal. In other words, you put that. Five ninety eight. Well, who else has a reading for tonight? I got one. I can read if you want. I got one. Phil, you got one? I, I'll leave I'll leave one verse of this song, Philip. I'll let you I'll let you go next. <laughs> Walter, if you want, you can go after Philip. How's that? Okay. I want to give everybody a chance except for Ryan. <laughs> 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 
598. We'll sing the first verse. As a journey through this veil of sorrow, the way seems so strange and unknown. Lord, I need a helping hand to borrow, for I cannot find the way alone. I can. Texas boys, we were all in 100% agreement. Romans 6 is the premier text on the necessity. You know, we talk about Acts 2.38, Mark 16.16, 16, all these other passages. There is not a more powerful text than, Rom than Romans 6, particularly one, Romans 6, 1 to 7 in particular. But, but they, just, they just don't come any better than that. I really appreciate you doing that one tonight. Come on, Phil. I had a couple of different ones. Uh, one was uh, 1 John, uh, the whole chapter of it, talking about walking in the light. The other one here, but I decided just to go with this one here. It's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Oh, is that what you're going to do? <laughs> a little bit of huh? Well, that's fine. I'm not doing it. I'm doing 1 Corinthians 13. So, um, and I know everybody here knows, knows where this is headed. So. It says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, that I could not remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, it's not puffed up, it does not behave rudely, it does not seek its own, it's not provoked, it thinks no evil, it does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail, whether there are tongues, they will cease, whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which in part will be done away with. And that's just a little gem there. Um, that which is perfect when it has come, that um, is referring to the Bible, uh, uh, the, God's Word. So that's just another thing that uh, just shows you that uh, spiritual gifts are not, not, um, they're not available today to us. And when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. And when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am, just as I have also known. And now I abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. King James Version. I'm going to read it out of 1 John just a little bit, then I'm going to back up uh, into 2 Peter and come down. What I'm going to do. I'm going to start in 1 John, 1st chapter, verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declared unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with them, we walk in darkness, we lie, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, 
For the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful, just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and the, his word is not in us. And I thought when it says a liar there, you ought to go over to Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, and read what all them people is not going to make it. And liars is listed with them. All right, I'm going to read in 2 Peter, third chapter, starting with verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but his long suffering, suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with the fur of heat. The earth and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in all conversation and godliness? Conversation is not meaning talking. It's meaning a matter of life. Looking for and hastening to the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promises, look for a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. Now I'll let you do the comment. <laughs> <laughs> let me do the comment. Yeah. Good job. How's that? That's my comment. That's good. I like that. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? I'm going to cut you out tonight. Is that all right? <laughs> you mad? I'll cook you something. I don't want to. All right. Um... I want to thank all the guys that that, uh, that took time to, to read. Appreciate uh, 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 Skyler picking up one on the on the fly, and thankful for Dylan. Um, watching watching and listening to Kyle just uh, just does my heart good. Uh, just the way that he continues to progress and grow and mature and and, uh, and take charge uh, just gives you a lot of gives you a lot of hope and good feelings for the future of this congregation. We've got young guys that, that are coming along and, and doing such great work, and we're thankful, uh, thankful so much uh, for them. Um, are there any announcements or anything we need to mention tonight? I'm going to go ahead and turn this, turn this off. Y'all didn't know you have been broadcast all over the world, did you?